All right. Um, so in chapter uh, 1.3, uh, we studied about this uh, vector equation. <coughs> so the vector equation, uh, yeah, we mainly looked at. Let's see, yeah, this kind of problem. So we are given some uh, input vector or given vector a1 and a2, and also another uh, vector b. And the question is, can we form a linear combination of a1 and a2, which is in this form, like the scalar multiple of the first and the scalar mo another scalar multiple of the second vector is equal to the given vector b. Okay, so <clears throat> all the three vectors over here, this one, then this one, and this one, uh, these are all known, but our uh, unknown or what we have to uh, determine is these two uh, linear combination coefficient, right? And uh, we studied that, yeah, once we uh, just rewrite this equation, and then, yeah, just uh, multiplying all these with the el each element, and then, yeah, given a particular vector, uh, <coughs> yeah, between the two vectors, uh, if they are the same, and then uh, each element should be the same, right? And so, yeah, we obtain this guy should be equal to this, this, and so on, right? So, starting from one uh, vector equation that finds out this uh, linear combination coefficient of the C1 and C2 or X1 and X2 over here. Yeah, so starting from the single equation that involves these uh, vector on the left and the right hand side, and we now obtain these uh, three dimensional, yeah, or oh, sorry, uh, three num yeah, three different equations. Okay? And then, uh, yeah, this is the familiar linear system that we saw in the previous chapters. So that's how, yeah, this vector equation uh, is literally the same as the linear system that we studied before. <clears throat> and then from here, yeah, uh, we considered uh, when this vector equation has the solution or not, okay? And so, <clears throat> to consider this, uh, we cons yeah we studied about this uh, notion of span, okay span. So basically, span of the two vector. For example, this uh, u is one two three in three dimensional space, and v is two three four. And yeah, this is just an example. And then, the span of u comma v is the set of all the vectors that is formed by any kind of li any linear combination of these uh, two <coughs> vectors okay so the linear combination of the two vectors is 1 2 3 and 2 3 4 and yeah let's say we use the linear combination coefficient as 1 1 and it's uh, 3 5 7 and this is one element uh, in this set, okay, of span, right? And then how about 0 and 1, or negative 1 and negative 1, or negative 0.3 and 0.5? So you can plug in any linear combination coefficient, and then you will obtain different vector at, at a time, right? So all these vectors, and uh, collecting them into one single set, we call it span, okay? <clears throat> Okay, and then uh, back to the question of whether we have a solution or not for a given linear system. So this, uh, from this vector equation perspective, okay, in this <coughs> vector equation perspective, let's see. <coughs> so let's consider the span of this uh, a1 and a2. Span of a1 and a2. So a is this vector and this vector, and you got yeah you get the idea of this set, right? And then uh, now we are given like uh, additional vector b independently. I mean that is, yeah, that is coming from. I mean that is, yeah, independently obtained from a one and a two. And this b vector uh, happens, yeah, happens to be inside of this span, or this happens to belong to the span. And then what does that mean? Even though we don't know the linear combination, linear combination coefficient yet, 
but we can guarantee that this vector b is represented as a linear combination of a1 and a2, right? So that guarantees we have the solution for this linear system. And what if this b is outside of this span? And then that's when we have no solution at all, right? <coughs> Okay, so yeah, also geometrically, um, <coughs> consider this a span. So given these two vectors, and then we know that the span is the collection of all the points on this plane, like this point or this point or this point, and so on. So for example, like this point, what will be the linear combination coefficient? It is, yeah, formed by this uh, two v and c. For for u right, so linear combination coefficient will be four comma two corresponding to u and v respectively, right? So that will form this point, and that is certainly one element belonging to our span of u and v, right? Okay, so <clears throat> we can think of this uh, span as this uh, straight kind of a plane uh, formed by these two uh, vector u and v, and uh, uh, if our b is outside of this plane and that's when we have no solution at all and that means this b cannot be represented as a linear combination of u and v okay any questions so far okay then let's move to the next chapter and then now uh, let's Consider another uh, form of uh, equation called matrix equation. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, let, uh, let's get back to this vector equation version, and then uh, let me use this example. Uh, okay, so we are given these two vectors, and then now uh, we now understand this uh, vector equation form. Right, so a1 and a2 and b, and uh, they are equal uh, with some linear combination coefficient. Okay, then now uh, let me just show how to change or how to how to convert this left hand side into a matrix equation form. Okay. I'm just rewriting this uh, vector equation. Okay, so this is uh, what we saw as a vector equation form. <clears throat> then now I'm gonna change this left hand side into this form. Okay, so <clears throat> what I did was to collect these two columns and then uh, form it as a single matrix right and then uh, we had these two linear combination coefficients and we brought yeah we bring it to form a single vertical vector or column vector or, uh, that is multiplied on the right or right side of this matrix okay okay and then uh, let me just uh, rewrite or evaluate this expression okay so in this case <clears throat> yeah, we know how to perform this uh, matrix vector multiplication so this times this right and so 1 times x1 and 2 times x2 right and negative 2 times x1 plus 5 times x2 and 5 times x2 plus 6 times x2 oops so on <coughs> right okay so <clears throat> this is the resulting vector of this matrix vector multiplication and yeah what we what we also did from this expression was we just multiply this with each element right 
and then add it to yeah add it together element wise right and then um, yeah it will be 1 times x1 2 times x2 and negative 2 times x1 plus 5 times x2 and 5 times x1 plus 6 times x2 right so they are exactly the same with each other right <coughs> so this left hand side which is a uh, which is the linear combination of the given vector okay and then uh, it can be rewritten or it can be differently written as this mat uh, matrix on the left that collects all the uh, base vectors as columns and then uh, using those linear combination coefficients we form the vector multiplied on the right and yeah, right side of this matrix okay so this part okay this part we can write a times x uh, where this x is a vector okay that is collection of all the linear combination coefficient or basically the column vector uh, con containing all the variables that we have okay so this part is a and this part is our x okay so this is called a matrix equation where we have this one a times x is equal to b <coughs> Okay, so <clears throat> let me just uh, summarize once again. Uh, let's see. Yeah, suppose we have this linear system where we have three equations and two variables. Okay, and this form or this linear system is rewritten as this kind of vector equation where we just collect all these coefficients over here and over here and over here and we just uh, factor x1 and x2 out as this <coughs> yeah, this linear combination coefficient right so that way this uh, vector equation is uh, equivalent to our original linear system and also this vector equation can also be represented as this let's see yeah this matrix equation okay matrix equation and how we obtain this uh, matrix equation it's really simple so we just uh, form the matrix negative 1 and 2 negative 1 and 2 and negative 2 5 negative oh it was yeah uh, negative 5 and 6 yeah and then uh, we just collect a 3 by 2 matrix and then using this matrix and then we multiply x1 and x2 as a column vector on the right and then that should be the same as 7 4 negative 3 okay so that is the matrix equation form and by the way uh, it should have been negative 5 right uh, having the same yeah, same example right <clears throat> And then now uh, let's look at the notation form. Okay, so this uh, matrix equation, um, we have this A1 and A2 and A3, right? So those are uh, this guy, the columns, and collecting them into a single matrix, right? And so that is this part. And our uh, column vector x collecting all the uh, variables uh, from x1 through xn and then uh, we uh, multiply it on the right okay okay and then this form or this matrix vector multiplication we know that this is the same as the linear combination of the column vectors on the on the left right so we have a1 and a2 and a n and this guy right and so <clears throat> It's just like a yeah, simple kind of inner product from this form. So here, let's just consider or assume these a1 and a2 and a n are just scalar. Okay, they yeah. Although they are vector of course, but 
uh, scalar is a one-dimensional vector, right? And so instead of having multiple elements in A1 through AN, let's just assume these uh, A1 and A through A through AN are just a scalar, okay? And then we know that the mate, uh, vector inner product, or this vector times this vector in this form, will be just forming this guy x1 times a1 and x2 times a2 and so on right so we can understand it in this form also more importantly here this a1 and through a n even if they they are extended to a vectors having the same dimensions of course okay and then this representation or this expression will still be true okay <clears throat> Any questions so far? All right. Um, <clears throat> then, um, yeah, let's look at this example. Suppose we have uh, v1, v2, and v3, and consider this linear combination coefficient. And then, yeah, uh, sorry, this linear combination representation. And then we know that this can be rewritten as having this matrix on the left by collecting all these columns, all, all these column vectors, and 3 and negative 5 and 7, using them, we, we form this uh, column vector. Okay, and then if we multiply that on the right, and then this representation is the same as this guy. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so yeah, uh, looking at this matrix equation example, we know that uh, the equa uh, we have two equations. This times this is equal to four, and this times this is equal to one, right? And also, this can be viewed as this and this. In this we have three column vectors in two dimensional space right and then uh, we multiply x1 x2 and x3 and then add it together uh, from the vector equation perspective and then by using the linear combination of these three vectors we have to make it equal to 4 comma 1 okay and then simply yeah we can understand this uh, matrix equation form as well Right, and uh, I think this theorem is uh, quite obvious. So, yeah, I'm gonna skip this part, skip this theorem, and then uh, move to a little bit more tricky or uh, probably the uh, the most important part uh, in today's lecture is this theorem. So, yeah, if you understood this theorem today, and then I think yeah, you can be happy. <laughs> So, so here, yeah, from the vector equation perspective, yeah, we understood that the condition or the requirement of having an, uh, the solution of a given linear system uh, is determined whether this vector v is uh, belonging to the span of a1 through a n, for example, right? We understand this, right? So that means V should be at least yeah, uh, should be represented as at least one form of linear combination of A1 through AN, right? So that was our condition. So if it is not possible, and then that's when we have no solution at all, right? And then, <clears throat> so now this theorem, uh, I mean the situation that this theorem is considering is as follows. So the question is even before looking at the vector b, okay. So again, even before we know what our vector b is, can we say can we say that our linear system is guaranteed to have the solution? Okay. 
So, so let me give this uh, uh, simple example. So, the situation is we know, yeah, we are given a's, uh, the vector a's already that is used on the left hand side, but not on the ve not the vector on the right hand side. So. So in this situation, okay, so we want to answer that okay, this linear system is guaranteed to have the solution or not, regardless of any vector that is given on the right hand side. Okay, can we say or can we answer this yeah this kind of question in this situation? Okay, so, so let me just give an example of maybe 1 and 2. And then, uh, so, yeah, let's imagine you just perform the Gaussian elimination and then obtain the solution. And maybe this guy, or this guy, or this guy, and so on. So we can imagine many different possibilities of this uh, uh, vector B, right? But in this situation, if you do the Gaussian elimination for a particular vector b, and then uh, you can yeah, you can kind of guess that oh it seems that uh, for whatever b is given, uh, the solution will always be found or the solution will always exist. Okay, so <clears throat> in that situation, yeah. So this situation is described in this theorem. So suppose we are given the matrix A as a n, m by n matrix. So A is our coefficient matrix. So we have m equations and n un unknowns, right? Okay, and then here, let's look at this first statement. For each p in Rm, okay, so we have m equations, so we need m numbers to, to obtain this vector b. So of course vector b is uh, m dimensional vector and we consider any vector b, okay? And in that case the equation has always a solution, okay? So this is the, the situation that I just, I just described, right? Okay, and uh, in this case, in this case, we know that this vector b is okay. So those vector b, yeah. In order to have the solution, we know this vector b should be inside of the span of the two vector here. In this case, what will be the two vector? It will be two n one right and three comma negative one, right? <coughs> okay, so. In this case, for any uh, vector b, this vector is guaranteed to be this uh, span of these two vectors. And what does that mean? So collecting all the possible b's, okay? Collecting all the possible b's, what will form uh, the collection of these b's? So it will just simply fill out all the two-dimensional space, right? So entire two-dimensional space, because we can have freedom to choose any vector b in two-dimensional space in this case, right? So all these uh, vectors should be belong, yeah, belonging to this particular set. And what does it mean? This guy should be equal to just entire universe or the entire uh, entire set of this R two, right? So <clears throat> In this case, so in this situation, it is not, yeah, it is not the case where we can guarantee the solu yeah, the existence of the solution for any b because, depending on our b, so if the b is happening to be given over here, and then <coughs> this is when we have no solution at all, right? But what if this blue 
plane, this blue plane, is entirely filling up or entirely cover uh, the three-dimensional space. Okay. So in this case, for whatever b, so it is impossible to for this uh, it is impossible for this vector b escape or uh, place be placed outside of this span uh, span set, right? So <clears throat> this situation is that this uh, span is equal to the entire space, right? Okay, so that is described in this form. The columns of A span Rm. And uh, so what it means is, so this sentence is the same as span of A1 through An is equal to Rm or the entire entire universe okay and also this vector b ah sorry <coughs> the second item b is saying that every b every b is represented i mean it is possible that every b is represented as a linear combination of the columns of an a right so this is basically the definition or basically the same statement as this guy because for any vector b yeah that is belonging to our span right and uh, it means that every vector b is represent yeah it is always possible that any vector b is represented as a linear combination of the columns of an a okay so a b and c so those three items are just logically the same thing, right? So they are essentially saying the same thing. Okay? And then now, <clears throat> the probably the, the most important part is the fourth item, uh, which is saying that A has the pivot position in every row. So if we satisfy this condition, okay, if we satisfy this condition, and then that's when we say the solution is always existing for any given b or regardless of any b we can guarantee that the solution exists okay so so let me explain this by using this example okay so yeah, let's just uh, construct the augmented matrix 2, 3, and question mark, and 1, negative 2, and question mark. So this is our augmented matrix, right? And then uh, let's perform the Gaussian elimination. And then 2, 3, and uh, question mark, and let's yeah, erase it by just uh, multiplying it by negative 1 half, right? So this will be the first step of our Gaussian elimination. So we obtain 0. And then so it will be in this form after performing the Gaussian elimination for one step. Right? Okay, so <clears throat> So here, uh, let me ask whether this is, so is this echelon form or not? Is this echelon form or not? Right? So this is an echelon form, right? And where is our, where is our pivot? So pivots are found over here, right? So these two are the pivots in our echelon form, okay? And now let's look at every row. So let's back to, get back to this statement. A has pivot in every row, okay? So what it means is every row. So we have basically two rows in this example. And the question is, is each row 
have pivot. So in the first row, we have a pivot, and the second row, we have also a pivot, right? And uh, <coughs> those pivots are found in, let's see, those pivots are found in, so this is our uh, A part, so let's call this as an A and this as a B, because we have this uh, AX equals equals B and that is our uh, matrix equation form and then from the augmented matrix so uh, we will just bring A on the left and B on the right right and then um, let's say this is called A prime and B prime for example okay so when considering this A prime part okay A prime part yeah within this A prime part does every row has a pivot within this a prime so the question is i mean the answer for this question is yes right because we can see our pivots over here and those pivots are all belonging to a prime part not on the b prime part right okay so if we can obtain this <coughs> echelon form that satisfies this kind of condition that every uh, Every row has a pivot within this uh, A prime part. Okay, so this is when we can guarantee that our uh, linear system has always the solution regardless of any vector b. Okay, so <clears throat> let me explain it a little bit more intuitively. So let's imagine if it yeah it was uh, 1 and 2 or negative 1 and negative 2 or 0 and 1 and so on. So does it affect these uh, this first step of Gaussian elimination? So we always look at the yeah when doing the Gaussian elimination, we always look at the first equation and then look at the first variable to erase, right? And so they will just follow. I mean, they will just be multiplied with this guy and then added together to the second row, right? So these numbers will change. So that's why I wrote this as a uh, question mark or yeah, let's say uh, it's a B1 and B2, right? And this will remain as the same number, right? Because the first equation will not change at all. But this the second equation will be B2 minus b1 right but yeah <clears throat> but we don't actually care about these numbers when considering or when performing this Gaussian elimination at least for the first yeah first step of uh, just making or erasing uh, these values by using this and so on right so yeah during or while we perform Gaussian elimination all the way until I mean the first phase of a Gaussian elimination okay one row at a time using that as an eraser and then remove or erase all the uh, the first variable coefficient by using that eraser and then uh, we consider uh, one kind of one variable smaller and one equation smaller sized linear system and then do the same thing and then uh, suppose we uh, just performed all these uh, all these uh, uh, Gaussian eliminations until we reach the last row, okay, and then uh, and then at that point, at then at that point, if we can find all the pivots in our matrix A part, okay, so that's when we have the pivots in every row within this uh, A part, and then until until that point, until that point, these B's we just follow from this computation of row replacement okay so whether they are uh, this guy or this guy and so on right so in this case yeah in this case <coughs> we can guarantee that uh, we always have a solution and so let me uh, explain <coughs> a little bit more by using some other example okay so
Let's consider this augmented matrix. Okay, this augmented matrix, and then two, three, and x, and zero, and zero, and x prime. Right. So in this case, <coughs> this is when we cannot guarantee that we always have a solution. Okay. So in this case. Uh, let's look at each row, the first and the second row. So here we have a pivot over here, right? And is this pivot or not? So it actually depends on the original value of b, right? So if it was by 4 and negative 2, and then this guy will become 0, right? And if this guy was maybe 3, and then uh, this guy will be non-zero value, right? So in this case, the pivots are found over here. So this is pivot, and this may or may not be our pivot, depending on a particular B vector, right? So in this case, looking at every row, the first row had a pivot on this uh, a, a part or a prime part as a evolves. Okay, and in the case of second row, second row, it didn't or it failed to have a pivot within this a prime part. Okay, so in this case, uh, this is when we cannot guarantee the solution always exists regardless of this. Uh, uh, vector b. So in this case, the solution may exist if we are lucky in a way that this this guy doesn't have a pivot at all, right? Or uh, if it uh, unfortunately this guy has a pivot, okay? The last column has a pivot, and then and then uh, this is when we have no solution at all, right? And why do we have no solution when we have a pivot on the right and uh, the rightmost column? This is because, like uh, zero, zero, and three, for example. In this case, it corresponds to zero times x one, zero times x two, is equal to three, which is impossible to achieve or uh, make true, right? <coughs> okay. So <coughs> the point is. Regardless of this last column, okay, we can just perform the Gaussian elimination, okay, and then suppose we obtained the pivots in our echelon form, all within our this a part, okay, a part, until we reach the last row, okay. So suppose we perform all at the Fourth, yeah, fourth phase or the first phase of a Gaussian elimination until we reach the last row, right? And then, uh, regardless of this guy, if we can find all the pivots uh, inside of this A part, then that's when we have no solution. Ah, sorry, we always guarantee uh, to have a solution, okay? And yeah, uh, I didn't mention the reason why. Yeah, so when we have this kind of pattern, and how can we guarantee the solution always exists? It is because, yeah, it is because for every row, for every row, we cannot find this guy, the, this kind of form, right? So in the first element, this corresponding variable will have a non-zero coefficient, and in the second equation, this guy will also have non-zero equation uh, non-zero coefficient and then all the way until the last row or last equation the last equation will also have at least one uh, variable that has non-zero coefficient right so in this case regardless of any vector v on the right hand side uh, we always have uh, uh, yeah we always uh, have a way to uh, make this equation uh, satisfied or obtain the solution regardless of any vector b on the right hand side okay
Okay, so <coughs> that is the last tense in this theorem. A has a pivot position in every row. So it means when checking every row, okay, pivots are always placed within the um, A part, okay, not in the B part. Okay, so in other words, yeah, we will, yeah, we will have, yeah, we will see no equations like this. Zero times x1 through zero times xn is equal to some, yeah, some value. Any questions so far? Okay, then <clears throat> using this kind of property or character characteristic, uh, let's look at this example. Suppose we have this kind of augmented matrix where we have um, three rows and two columns uh, in our matrix A or two variables right and three rows and roughly or intuitively we know that in this particular case uh, generally the solution <coughs> is not always exist existing in this case because two two unknowns and three equations, right? Okay, so in this case, let's just imagine performing the Gaussian elimination, okay? Then uh, we obtain the pivot over here and zero, right? And then uh, we move to this a smaller linear system and then perform another, yeah, Gaussian elimination. And then uh, suppose this guy is non-zero or our pivot and we have zero, right? Okay, and then it's time to move to the last row, last row, right? But this is our A, right? So when reaching or when arriving at the last row, and then there is no, yeah, no element uh, to become a pivot within this A side, right? Because A had two columns, right? So for the first row, we used the first variable working as a pivot. And in the second row, we used the second variable as our pivot, right? But we still have more rows to handle, right? So in this case, can we have a pivot in the third row within this A part? It is impossible, simply because we have three rows and only two columns in our A, right? So in this case, in this case, this, uh, yeah, this situation is not satisfied. Or in this case, we may have the solution depending on or if we, yeah, if we are given some kind of a lucky vector b, and then we still have a solution. We still have a chance to have a solution. But if we have an uh, unlucky b or some other b vector, and then yeah, we cannot have a solution. And in other words, we cannot guarantee that this linear system has always a solution, right? So this is not possible. Okay. Then how about this case? Suppose we have more variables than the number of equations. Okay, so let's imagine performing the Gaussian elimination and then this is our pivot and this is zero and suppose this guy is our pivot or yeah, yeah, let's first look at this example. So in this case, at every row, we have a pivot over here, and then they are all covered 
or they are all uh, yeah, included in our matrix B, right? So this is the situation that satisfies this condition, right? Every row has a pivot within the A part. So in this case, even before looking at uh, the vector B, we can guarantee that we have a solution, okay? Okay, and then, <clears throat> and then now uh, let's uh, think of this situation from the perspective of a span. Okay, so in this case, yeah, get back to the first example. So span all, this is an A1 and A2, and A1 and A2, right? So <clears throat> in order to satisfy uh, this theorem, we have to have the span of these uh, column vectors of an A should be equal to R3, right? So if we can cover the entire three-dimensional space by using the span of our columns of an A, this is when we can guarantee that we always have a solution regardless of any vector B, right? But would it be possible at all? So let's think of our three-dimensional space and then uh, we know the, the span of the two vectors uh, is uh, shown in this plane, right? So <clears throat> in three-dimensional space, we only have the two vectors of A1 and A2, right? And then their span, yeah, will be represented as this uh, thin plane, right? And so uh, we can, yeah, we may change our u and v. So our u is this guy or v is this guy. And then this plane, the direction or the angle of this plane may change. But by only using the two vectors and then uh, forming the span of these two, there is no way or it is impossible to fill out the entire three-dimensional space, right? So that is the same as this situation. So <clears throat> we have these two column vectors, right, in three-dimensional space, right? And so we have no way to have the pivots in every row, every row, by using these two columns because each column will work as a, yeah, will work as a one pivot at most, right, because once this guy was pivot and then the the rest of them or the lower part will become zero and so we cannot recycle the same column uh, to generate the multiple pivot okay so in other words one column will produce or will provide at most one uh, one pivot right so in three dimensional space we can only have at most two pivots right so that's when we cannot uh, fill out the entire three-dimensional space, okay? <clears throat> Any questions so far? Right, and then uh, let's look at this example. So now uh, let's think of this two-dimensional space. And suppose it is one, two, and three, one. Uh, maybe one, one, okay? So in this case, uh, <coughs> 1 comma 2 is over here, right? The first vector, 1 comma 2. And 3 comma 1, 3 comma 1 is somewhere around here, right? And then let's think of the span of these two vectors, a1 and a2. So by using these two vectors, by using these two vectors, we already filled up. We already uh, fill up the entire R2, right? And then what about this uh, second, uh, the third one? For example, 1 comma 1. So in this case, yeah, we have kind of a surplus or kind of redundant or additional vector, right? So in this case, let's imagine the span of these three different vectors. Okay, so in this case, does it increase our span? It is not. So, yeah, this uh, redundant vector will not increase our span. I mean, in this case, because we already filled up the entire, yeah, entire two-dimensional space, right? So, 
For example, in this case, this is a linear combination of a1 times 1 plus a2 times 1, right? And then by using all the linear combination coefficients, uh, by changing these values, and then uh, we can fill up the entire two-dimensional space. And so we can always guarantee that B is span of A1 and A2, right? But what about this third row? What about this third row? Ah, sorry, this third row of 1, 1. <clears throat> So in this case, span of a1 and a2 and a3 is uh, actually equal to span of a1 and a2. We actually don't need the third one, okay? And um, in this case, if we add another vector, 1 comma 1 or a3, and then what's the effect of adding additional vector in this case? This makes, yeah, this makes our solution, uh, the number of our solution, infinitely many. So we will study it in the next chapter, but uh, let me just explain it. So here, yeah, suppose we are given this point, okay? So in this case, how can we make this point by using the parallelogram? Then uh, it will be just like this. So a1 times 1, a2 times 1, right? But we can also make this point uh, using a different parallelogram by using, for example, this a2, uh, this a3, and a2. For example, <coughs> see, like this, and like this. So, something like this, right? So this is clearly a different parallelogram, right? So previously we made the parallelogram by using a1 and a2, but now we use the, our parallelogram using a2 and a3, right? So in this case, let's see, a2 was this length, and then uh, we need only this length of a2, and it seems like 0.7, right 0.7 times a2 and then what about uh, this part it is like so this is originally a3 so it seems to be like 2.5 times a3 right so in this case the same value or same vector b can be represented as 0.7 a2 plus 2.5 a3 and plus 0 times a1 right so by using the three vectors uh, that have this kind of redundant vector. In this case, our linear, uh, given a uh, same point, I mean the same uh, vector b, we can now represent the same vector b by using different sets of a linear combination coefficient. And uh, if yeah, we know that uh, this specific uh, this linear combination coefficients are actually our solution of our linear system, right? So in this case, this is when we have multiple or infinitely many different uh, solutions okay so <clears throat> okay so in this case yeah this is when uh, we have uh, yeah at least we uh, can guarantee that we have a solution because we have a pivot over here and also uh, what if uh, our uh, matrix over here in this is in this form one three five uh, 2, 6, 10, and something like that. So in this case, if we uh, perform the um, Gaussian elimination, this is our pivot and 0, 0, 0, right? So in this case, even though we have more variables, we have three variables, which is more than number of equations, which is 2, so it is not always the case that we have always the solution. Okay? So in this case, so pivot doesn't exist in the second row within this a part right so in this case we cannot guarantee that uh, we always have a solution regardless of this guy so in this case suppose if this was 7 and 14 and then fortunately this guy will become 0 right so 
we don't have a pivot on the rightmost column. So this is when we have a solution, right? But if it was uh, 15, and then this will become our pivot, which is uh, 0 times x1, 0 times x2, 0 times x3 is equal to uh, non-zero. So this is when we have no solution, right? So depending on the vector b, we may have a solution, but we may not have a solution, right? Okay. But we don't talk about this situation in this theorem. So this theorem uh, is the is 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 this yeah is uh, discussing the situation where we can guarantee we can guarantee that we always have a solution even before looking at our b right. So in this case, that uh, theorem is not satisfied in this particular example because every row yeah fail to have the solution uh, the pivot within a part. In particular, the second row didn't have a pivot in a part. Okay, so any questions so far? Okay, then uh, let's take a break until 1.10. <웃음> 문제 중에 하나 있거든요. 네. 그맨 맨 마지막 1 3의 맨 마지막 문제인데 네. 이렇게 있을 때 벡터 1, 벡터 2, 벡터 3으로 얘 b를 만들 수 있는 x1, x2, x3 이거 가중치가 몇몇뭐 있냐 없냐 아니면 무한이 맞냐 그런 건데 딱 봐도 좀 무한이 많잖아요 이게 사실. 네. 근데 이걸 뭐라고 써야 될지 모르겠어서 이렇게 써서 써봤거든요. 이거 맞는 건지 모르겠어요. 네. 일단은 여기서 이 지금 상태에서 프리 베리어블이 있을 수가 있느냐를 먼저 따져봐야 돼요. 그렇죠? 근데 지금 그냥 여기서 프리 베리어블이 있다고 쓴게 아마 이렇게 그 아실로 폼으로 붙이면 지금 로우가 두 개밖에 없고 두 개가 그러니까 여기 그러니까 지금 기본에 세 개의 베리어블이 있잖아요. 그럼 여기에서 피벗은 이세개 중에 두 개밖에 있을 수가 없잖아요. 왜냐하면 로우가 두 개밖에 없으니까 그렇기 때문에 하나는 최소한 프리 베리어블이어야 하죠. 그래서 이제 뭐, 뭐 그렇고 그 다음에 이거가 이거가 지금 나올지 말지 그러니까 이거를 체, 먼저 체크 이거를 체크하는 게 먼저잖아요. 근데 지금 이 지금 이런 애들이 주어지지 않은 경우에는 아, 여기가 다 영영영이고 여기가 난제로인 경우가 발생될 수 있죠. 그래서 이 경우는 솔루션이 지금 이것만 봐서는 솔루션이 어, 아, 무수히 많다라고 이야기는 어렵고 예 예로 예로 한정돼 있는. 문제가 이렇게 영이 아니라고 딱 주어진 것 같아요. 이거가 영이 아니고요. 네네. 그다음에 이게 그러니까 이것도 이게 아 이게 아 교과서 보니 네. 예로 한정지어서 문제가 된것 같아요. 네. 이게 이 어떤 두 개의 벡터 간의 방향이 다르면 네. 다르면 이제 이 B는 이들의 내년 분의 이런 다 표현이 될 수가 있어요. 네. 그러니까 그때는 뭐 솔루션이 있을 거고요. 근데 이제 여기서 보면. 이게 1, 2, 3, 6, 5, 10 이거는요 이 벡터가 3개가 주어지 이 차원에서 벡터가 3개가 주어지되 이게 다 지금 같은 방향으로 지금 네. 그런 상황이 되거든요 그러니까 어떤 벡터 B가 주어져 있을 때 걔가 이제 같은 그이 스팬 안에 들어올지는 잘 모르는 상황이에요 네. 근데 그림이 이렇게 다른 방향으로 그려져 있으면 그건 이제 솔루션이 네. 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 그 마지막 그 마지막에 네. 엔터 실수에서 네. 엔게퍼 더 많은 벡터들이 있으면 수이 많은 솔루션이 있다고 이해했는데 그게 맞나요? 아 다시 한번 그... 그러니까 그, 그 이렇게 표현되는 개수의 세계에서 엔게엔 네네 엔 엔게보다 많은 벡터들이 주어져 있으면 네. 그 네, 솔루션은 무수히 많다고 이해했는데 어떻게 <웃음> 네. 맞나요? 아, 네, 이게 완전히 맞진 않아요. 그러니까 이제 그러니까 예를 들면 이차 이차원에서 이차원에서 벡터가 세 개가 주어져 있을 때, 그러니까 이제 벡터가 차원보다 더 많이 주어져 있잖아요. 그 경우에도 
음, 일단은 솔루션이 있냐 없냐 측면에서 솔루션이 없을 수도 있거든요. 그러니까 예를 들면 이 경우가 지금 그런 건데 1, 2, 3, 6, 50 이런 경우는 이제 벡터가 3개 이제 차원보다 더 많이 주어져 있잖아요. 근데 지금 이게 보면 어떤 상황이냐면 1, 2가 이렇게 있으면 3, 6이 이렇게 돼 있고 50도 이렇게 다 같은 방향으로 이루어져 있는 거예요. 그럼 이 결국 이세 개의 벡터의 스팬을 따져 보면 이 차원 공간상에서 결국 이 라인밖에 안 되거든요. 그러면 그때는 이제 얘가 뭐냐에 따라서 이제 솔루션이 있을 수도 있고 없을 수도 있어요. 지금 여기서처럼 74면 솔루션이 있고 75면 솔루션이 이제 없는 거죠. 네. 그래서 일단은 피벗이 각 로우에 다 있는지 네. 그거를 우리가 좀 따져 봐야 되고요. 만약에 그게 솔루션이 있다. 그러니까 피벗이 다 있다 그러면 우리가 이제 솔루션이 있다라는 걸 개런티를 할 수가 있고 그러면 이제 피벗은 요 그러니까 이 A 파트에 있긴 할 텐데 지금 우리는 두개 로우가 있고 지금 세 개의 배리어블에 해당하는 컬럼이 있잖아요. 그러니까 이제 피벗은 이세 개의 컬럼 중에 딱두 개만 있을 거라고요. 왜냐하면 피벗은 로우당 하나씩만 있으니까. 네. 그러면은 그 상황에서는 그렇죠. 그 상황 그 상황에서 네. 프리 배리어블 있으니까 이 무슨 말이에요? 그리고 그그죠 그렇죠? 3차 원에서 세 벡터가 한 평면에 있으면 그, 그 솔루션이 있다고 확신할 수 없잖아요. 없지 않나요? 네, 솔루션. 3차원에서 저 여기 앞에서 네. 그, 이 A 그래서 음. 어떤 부분에서 틀리게 가지, 상황을 만든 건지 잘 모르게 제가 잘그 상황에서 어떻게 여기서 어떤 부분이 틀렸던 건지 그래서 이게 왜 해당되지 않아서 솔루션이 없다고 봐야 네네. 되는지 모르겠어요. 그 3차원 공간에서 이제 두 개밖에 없으면 네. 벡터가 두 개밖에 없으면 그러니까 아, 우리가 스팬으로 개념 스팬의 개념을 생각해 보면 이제 벡터 두 개만을 가지고 만들 수 있는 거는 이제 얇디 얇은 어떤 평면밖에 안 되는 거잖아요. 네. 그러니까 이제 전체 공간을 다 뒤덮, 3차원 공간을 아, 다 뒤덮을 수 없죠. 그게 아니라 벡터가 3개가 있는데 그 네. 3개의 벡터가 모두 한 평면에 있으면 네. 그때도 모두 붙을 수가 없잖아요. 네네네 네, 네, 맞아요. 네. 그렇다, 근데 그때, 그때에도 네. 네. 벡터 개수가 부족한 건 아닌데 왜 아, 솔루션이 있는지 네. 그거는, 그것도 이거랑 비슷한 네 맞아요. 그게 그러니까 아, 그러니까 직관적으로 이런 거거든요. 처, 처, 그러니까 벡터를 하나씩 하나씩 그러니까 우리가 세 개의 벡터가 주어져 있다고 할때 이제 첫 번째 벡터를 생각을 하고요. 그거의 스팬을 따져요. 그러면 한 라인이 나오겠죠. 그 다음에 두 번째 벡터가 추가가 됐을 때 스팬을 따졌을 때는 이제 얘는 이 라인 상이 없기 때문에 이두 개에 대한 그 스팬은 이 평면이 되죠. 평면이 되고 그 다음에 여기서 이세 번째 우리한테 주어진 세 번째 벡터가 이 3차원 공간상에서 실제로 이 평면 안에 있지 않고 이 바깥쪽에 있으면 바깥쪽에 있으면 얘를 포함을 했을 때 스팬은 이게 뭐 삐딱하든 뭐, 뭐 수직이든 뭐 상관없이 전체 3차원으로 3차원 전체 공간으로 이 스팬이 늘어나요. 네. 늘어나지만 이제 이게 만약에 좀 운이 나빠서 그러니까 여기 이렇게 포함이 되었다. 여기 이렇게 포함이 되었으면 이게 세 개의 스팬을 해봐야 그러니까 이세 개의 리니어 커뮤니케이션 아무리 해봐야 이 평면 여전히 이제 이 차원 평면밖에 안 되는 거예요. 그래서 이제 벡터의 개수가 세 개지만 세 아, 개라고 우리가 3 차원 공간에서 벡터가 세개 주어졌다고 해서 그게 꼭3 차원을 다 이렇게, 이렇게 완전히 뒤덮을 수 있느냐는 또 따져봐야 되는 거고요. 그게 이제 그 피벗의 패턴으로 보면. 네, 피벗의 패턴으로 보면 이제 뭐 네, 3x3에서 보면 이제 얘가 이제 세 번째 컬러 B가 아니라 세 번째 우리 A3라고 하면 여기 여기 있는데 여기는 피벗이 없는 거예요. 그런 경우는 이제 네, 피벗이 없으면 이게 다 못했으니까 모든 로우가 피벗을 갖고 있지 갖고 가는데 실패했으니까. 네. 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 그렇죠. 
three unknowns. Three unknowns. Yeah. yeah. We have three unknowns, right? Yeah. And two uh, equations. And so in this case, uh, the solution still, uh, I mean, sol no solution uh, is existing over here. Yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> so even if we have more variables than the equations, uh, yeah, we cannot guarantee that the solution is always existing. Yeah. yeah. And this one's here. This mind comes here. It means like you have to divide this one into three types, mm -hmm. and then you have to found you have to find their like central central mass. Mm -hmm. You also have to uh, do like this. Mm -hmm. Like for example, they have. Uh, can I borrow your pen? Uh, you can you can write over uh, here. Yeah, should uh, I should have a pen over here. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> if it is like this, like center mass is here, uh -huh. it's like because two two for example two two here is like then it has to divide this one like this. Matter? Mm -hmm. uh, that's it. This one's uh, W one W two. Okay. Yeah. And for example, if you will count this one, this like from here and count from this one, it's like the center mass will be approximately maybe here, here, right. and, yeah. and this one is over here, and this that's it. Yeah, I didn't understand your question, but uh, these ones are assigned to each of our uh, yeah. points, yeah. right? <coughs> Yeah, so uh, if we use a different weight, and then uh, uh, we, yeah, we will take different center of mass using different weights. And additional mass, it means like you have to add 3 to 6 or right. just just, yeah, yeah, just yeah. 6. Yeah. But there is like W1s, W2s equal to 6. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Uh, yeah, can we take it offline or yeah. okay? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, uh, could, you, could you send me an email? Okay, uh, yeah, or uh, yeah, I'll forward it to, to my TAs. Yeah, so I didn't clearly understand your question. So, okay, yeah. <laughs> and last question like, is it compulsory to submit all, like, for example, uh, mm -hmm. here, about like this? Like, so must be non-zero like this, or you have to write like all the like, statements like h, h is equal to zero. There is no solution, and when it's or it's that one or this one is. Uh, okay. Yeah, we yeah we need this kind of form, I think. Yeah, uh, we can, yeah we have to consider all the possible cases. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that is quite an important point. So yeah. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Spend A B 면은 A가 성분이 두 개가 A B가 각각 성분 두개 있으면은 평면이 만들어지고 세 개가 있으면 공간이 만들어지고 만약에 A B C가 있을 때 각각의 성분이 세 개가 있으면 스펜이 어떻게 만들어지나요? A B C가 그러니까 벡터 세 개가 있을 때요? 네. 벡터 세 개면 이게 이제 이렇게 두 개가 있으면 네. 이거 두개한 포인트가 있으면 이제 하나가 더 있잖아요. 네. 그러면 이거랑 또 이거에 대한 어떤 그 패러, 평균 사면형의 입체가 만들어지거든요. 그거를 내가 설명을 해줄게요. 지금 수업 때. 아, 수업 때. 네, 네, 지금 바로 설명을 해줄게요. 대충 하면은 세 개의 평면이 만들어진다. 삼차원 공간을 이제 뒤덮게 된다. 약간 이런 거, 이런 식으로 되거든요. 네. 그래서 여기 여기가 원점이라고 하면 이거 이거 이거를 가지고 요 점도 만들 수 있고 뭐 이렇게 되는 거죠. 아, 네. 그거 하고 그 A에 대해서 설명하실 때 네. A가 이렇게 보통 나왔죠. 네. 아, 그 A가 MN M 곱하기 N 형태 선형계라고 하셨잖아요. 네. 그러면은 그 m 곱하기 n 자체를 그열 벡터가 n 개만큼 있는 거라고 생각해도 되는 거예요. 계속 과제하면서 공부했는데. 그렇죠. 네. 네. m by n이면 네열 네, 벡터가 n 개죠. 네. 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 네.
네. 네. 네. A X 보이면은 네. A 자체도 열 벡터가 여러 개 모여 있는 거고 X도 열 벡터의 성분을 가정치로 나누는 거니까 쉽게 보면은 그냥 전부 다 벡터라고 봐야 되는 거죠. 네, 그러니까 A가 A와 B가 이렇게 어그멘티드 매트릭스로 되어 있으면 네. A가 그러니까 방정식이 세 개고 B 지수가 세 개면 네. 그러면 이제 B가 하나가 더 추가가 되니까 이거는 이제 이렇게 따지면 3 이쪽이 3이고 이쪽이 4가 되고요. 네. 네. 그래서 어그멘티드 매트릭스에서의 디멘전이냐 아니면 이제 A에서 A라는 매트릭스에서의 디멘전이냐에 따라서 네. 이제 좀 달라지죠, 그 어, 그 A 자체를 그냥 완전히 네. 벡터 그러니까 그 성분이 세 개인 3 곱하기 1 볼에 열 벡터 세 개가 모여 있는 거라고 봐도 되죠. 그렇죠, 그렇죠. 네, 이렇게 봐야 되겠죠. 네. 그 과제에서 네. 그 피벗을 표시 하나 했는데 네. 오리지널 매트릭스랑 그다음에 리드스 에슐론 폼에서 네. 피벗을 표시 하나 했는데 네. 그 에슐론 폼에서 피벗은 그냥 네, 네, 네. first natural entry니까 네, 네. 하면 되는데. 오리지널 매트릭스에서 피벗을 아, 찍으라는 거는 네네. 어떤 뜻인지 잘 알겠어요. 저는 네, 오리지널 매트릭스에서 네. 같은 위치에 있는 거를 찍어라라는 뜻이에요. 아, 네. 어, 여기서 1, 5, 2. 네, 네, 맞아요. 네. 네. Okay, let's continue. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, one student uh, asked the question about uh, the span. Uh, yeah, span of uh, three or more, more than three vectors. So, yeah, we know the span of the two vectors in this form. So, what if we uh, have another vector? So, yeah, we can also think of the span in the using the three vectors in this. Figure as well. So <clears throat> suppose we have another vector w, for example. Okay, having a different direction. So in this case, yeah. Let's just think of this a simple form of just uh, having a linear co combination coefficient of all ones. Okay. So in this case, yeah, we can first compute this guy or consider this, and then that is. This guy, right? And then now, this vector times this vector, uh, and then uh, it will form additional parallelogram like this guy. Okay, so yeah, it, this is a, in a three-dimensional space, right? So uh, W is like in a upward direction, okay? And then uh, we just move. To this point along this plane, and then uh, using that vector, we have additional uh, vector u uh, going kind of upward, and then uh, using yeah we can have this another parallelogram like this, okay? And so this is the point, and then uh, from here we can freely change the linear combination coefficient assigned to w, right? So what if we assign the linear combination coefficient of 2 to w and then it is like this guy right this point right and then what about negative 1 and then uh, we negate the direction right so in this case we can easily see that using these uh, three uh, vectors and their span will form or we cover up the entire three dimensional space okay and uh, <coughs> we can also think of this kind of uh, high dimensional or multi dimensional parallelogram, right? So, in this case, we know <coughs> suppose this is, this is an origin and this is a u and this is v, and then we know this guy is u plus v or 1 times u, 1 times v, right? And then now, uh, what about u plus v <coughs> plus w, where uh, this guy is our w, okay? So in this case, we can think of this kind of parallelogram and or, yeah, <coughs> this uh, red, yeah, red parallelogram is corresponding to like this guy, right? So this, this, and this, and this. 
Okay, so in this case, the resulting ve vector is this guy. Okay, so we form this a multi-dimensional parallelogram, and also look for, still look for, uh, the force point. But in this case, uh, it has a six, uh, eight vertices, right? So this guy, which is uh, the farthest from the origin, so that was that is our uh, resulting uh, point from this. Uh, addition of these three vectors and their linear combination of a1 and a2 and a3 for example or c1 c2 c3 uh, by varying or changing the uh, these uh, linear combination coefficient we just change the lengths of these uh, vectors u v and w and then uh, yeah obtain the resulting point of this uh, multi-dimensional parallelogram any questions so far Right and then, uh, so uh, I I will skip this proof of this uh, yeah, formal skip uh, proof of this theorem because uh, I yeah already explained it uh, yeah uh, yeah in, in entirely and so let's skip this part. Okay. <coughs> You guys know what the identity matrix is, right? And then some uh, properties of this uh, uh, matrix and vector multiplication. And so we have a matrix and uh, the summation of the two vectors will be distributed in this form. And then uh, we have a scalar multiple over here and then uh, it can be moved to the left. Okay, that's it for this chapter four. And uh, let's move to move to the next chapter. Okay, so in this chapter, we now uh, study when uh, we have infinitely many solution or the unique solution okay so <clears throat> yeah to summarize what we studied so far in uh, until the previous chapter given a linear system whether it is represented as a set of linear systems or linear equations or vector equation or matrix equation uh, let's determine the solution and uh, also, how many solutions we have, okay? So in this case, if we have <coughs> uh, no solution at all, at all, or at least one solution, it will be determined from our echelon form of, have, yeah, of checking whether we have this particular column, uh, sorry, this particular row, or in other words, do we have a pivot in the rightmost column, right? So it will determine whether we have solution or not. Okay, so once we uh, checked or verified that we have no such rows in this form, okay? In this case, we can now guarantee that we have a solution, or we can say that uh, we at least have one solution, and, uh, and then uh, if we have a more uh, infinitely many solutions so that corresponds to the situation where we have some at least one free variable right so if we have no free variable and then uh, it, yeah it means uh, all the variables are basic variables and thus yeah in that case we have uh, infinite uh, unique solution uh, with no free variable and uh, if we can find at least one free variable and then yeah we have infinitely many solutions right okay and then now uh, from that perspective we now consider some 
yeah, somewhat easier version of the original linear system of ax equals b. So suppose we are initially given this ax equals b. Okay, and then now let's consider its uh, easier form of having zero on the vector b part. So this is not a scalar b, but it's a vector b, right? And this is also vector, I mean, zero vector, not a scalar. Okay, so in this example, we just maintained the same vector, uh, so same coefficient matrix A, but we just simply replaced our B as a zero. Okay, so in this case, let's imagine the Gaussian elimination. In this form, I mean, this is just a separator, separating our coefficient part and the rightmost column or the, the constant part. Okay, and in this case, A and is zero, right? And then uh, let's imagine some Gaussian elimination on this matrix and also on this matrix, okay? And then <clears throat> between the two, as we saw this particular example of, yeah, in this case, yeah. So regardless of any vector b, yeah, until we reach the last column, in our Gaussian elimination. Uh, the previous steps of all the Gaussian eliminations will be exactly the same between these two cases, right? So, uh, using this, when we are given 1, 2, or suppose we are given 0, 0, okay? <coughs> and then uh, performing the Gaussian elimination, and then until, yeah, before reaching the last column, and then all the uh, Gaussian eliminations will be exactly the same yeah, when the matrix A is, yeah, A remains the same. Okay? So in this case, <coughs> suppose this guy has some pivots, uh, something like this. Okay, so this is an A part and this is a B part. Right? So this is a uh, one example of yeah. Astronaut form of this matrix. Okay? And then uh, let's imagine, let's imagine the Gaussian elimination of this guy of a uh, fourth phase or the first phase. And in that case, <coughs> so in this case, this part Right, this part will be exactly the same as this part. I mean, the second version or second echelon form came from this A with the rightmost column of zero, and the first one is coming from this guy. Okay, so these two will be exactly the same, which means that which variables are free variable or not will be exactly the same okay and this what about this part so this part if we started from the zero zero column okay if we started from zero column what will be the column corresponding to this part it will be still zero right so let's imagine like uh, in this example we have 0 and 0, and then here is Gaussian elimination part. So we have three, three, 2 and 1 and negative 2, and still 0, 0. And then now, uh, even if we perform Gaussian elimination, and then this part will remain 0 and 0, because there will be some 0 times some uh, weight times 0, right? 
Okay, so these will be all zero. Okay. Okay, so in this case, <coughs> of, yeah, in this case of this uh, simpler form, uh, ax equals uh, zero. So is it possible to have uh, the the rows like yeah rows such as zero and some non-zero? Will it be possible? It is not, right? So the reason is because the last column will always remain zero throughout our any step or each step of our Gaussian elimination. Okay, so in this case we can guarantee that we will have no yeah no such rows like this. And so we can guarantee that the solution will always exist, right? <coughs> but in this particular case, in this particular case <coughs> By utilizing or by considering the previous uh, theorem that we studied, in this case, even when we have some non-zero vector b, yeah, it we always we also guarantee that we have a solution in this case, right? Because every row or each of our four rows will have a pivot in this a part, right? But yeah, before, yeah, I mean, uh, even if this one is not satisfied, okay, even if our matrix has something like this, so suppose we have a pivot of this position, okay, in this case, we have the, uh, the fourth row that doesn't have a pivot in this A part, Right, but in this case, if we are yeah, if we assume that we have zero vector for the b part, and then yeah, we can yeah we oh, yeah we have the solution in this case. Okay. <coughs> okay. So <coughs> back to this form of a x is equal to zero. We can see that this one uh, is guaranteed to have a solution whether it satisfies the previous theorem that we studied or not. Okay. And at the same time, <coughs> what is the yeah what is yeah what is the trivial or easily found solution that satisfies this equation? Let's just plug in this vector x as all zero vector. In this case, we can always produce this zero vector on the right hand side, right? So the, the overall, the main story is given this ax is equal to b, we just uh, replaced this b into zero. And then, yeah, we can find the trivial solution uh, that this x should be all zero, and then yeah, it will always care, yeah, it will always satisfy this solution. So we, yeah, so in this case, we call this kind of an equation where we have zero b on the right hand side is uh, we call it as homogeneous linear system. And then we know that this uh, homogeneous linear system always have the solution that is really trivially found, which is always zero, right? So this particular solution is is called trivial solution. Okay, so that is a, a mathematical name called trivial solution. Okay, and then uh, are there any non-trivial solution, or in other words, does this linear system have some other additional solution other than this all zero solution. Okay, so from the three cases where we have possibly no solution at all, one sol one solution only, and uh, infinitely many solution. Okay, so in this uh, homogeneous linear system, uh, we can guarantee that we always have a solution at least for for one, right? Because yeah, uh, yeah, we will not see this kind of yeah. Right, uh, pivots on the rightmost column, right? So, yeah, we can exclude out the case where we have no solution at all, but 
the rema uh, for the remaining two cases of having unique or only one solution or infinitely many solution, only one solution will yeah, include O0 solution as our trivial solution. But when do we have infinitely many solution? Okay, so we already yeah we already studied that uh, when we have infinitely many solution is corresponding to the case where we have free variable in our yeah linear system. <coughs> Right. So in this particular case, so we have a free variable, right? So this is when we have infinitely many solution, and that means that means we have some non-trivial solution. And uh, in other words, by just plugging some non-zero value on our variable, we can still make zero vector. Okay. So this is a. Uh, yeah, this is when we have an infinitely many solution, and uh, this is when we have free variable, right? But what about this case? In this case, <coughs> yeah, we have at least no free variable, right? So in this case, yeah, in this case, we can guarantee that we only, yeah, we have only one solution. And what is that solution? That solution is trivial solution, O0. So that means, yeah, by just plugging some non-zero values on any of our variable, then we cannot make this equation to be the same as zero. Okay. <coughs> right. So let's go through our uh, slide. So we already studied the definition of our homogeneous linear system. And then this homogeneous linear system where we replace this B part as zero uh, has always has at least one solution which is just trivially obtained as a zero vector. Right? Okay, and then uh, when this uh, homogeneous linear system has non-trivial solution, which is other than the all zero solution, okay, and then it it is the same as our linear system has at least one free variable. Okay. Okay, and then let's move to this example where we actually have O0. Okay. And then the yeah, the way of <laughs> obtaining the solution is just the same as this Gaussian elimination. So once we do the um, uh, forward and the backward Gaussian elimination or the uh, uh, forward and the backward phase and then uh, we obtained this right okay and then we obtained the pivot over here this is just a review right and so the first and the second variable is our the basic and the third one is our free variable and uh, how do we obtain our yeah parametric description of our solution so we just uh, rewrite it into this equation form and then we leave our basic variable on the left and we move all the free variables on the right hand side so this guy is go to going to the right hand side okay okay so <clears throat> we basically obtain this guy and this guy and this guy okay so so far so good so it is a uh, yeah, already what yeah we what we already studied right and then now uh, we will study one little and really cute trick to represent or express this solution in a vector form okay so if you think of this uh, matrix this matrix version or matrix equation we just formed our variables into a single vector so x1, x2, and x3 were all separate, right? They are all separate variables, but we, yeah, we formed a single vector just to collecting all the variables into a vertical or column vectors, and then used it uh, to form this uh, matrix equation, right? And then now, <clears throat> instead of representing our solution separately in this manner, x1 is equal to something, x2 is equal to something, x3 is equal to something. How about representing 
our vector of x1 through x3 into one single form. Okay, so this is a <coughs> this is one important trick that we study over here. Okay, so <coughs> here uh, we can write this guy into this form x1, x2, x3, and uh, x1 is equal to this guy, and x2 is equal to zero. So that comes from this equation, right? So we just plugged in and the and then x3. X3 is our free variable, right? So what's the meaning of free variable? We can just plug in any real value on this uh, free variable and that will work as a kind of starting point and that will work as a kind of a controlling value to determine all the other values. So if X3 was 1 and then X2, uh, sorry, X1 will be determined as 4 over 3 and uh, x, if x3 is uh, 0 and then accordingly x1 is 0 and so on, right? So this is how uh, we first set this uh, free variable and then all the other variables are determined accordingly based on this uh, particular value assigned to our free variable, right? Okay, so x3 is no other representation because that is our starting point. So x3 is just represented as x3 because they are free variable, right? right? And then uh, we can just uh, represent it or rewrite it into this form. 4 over 3 and 0 and 1 and uh, we obtain this a uh, constant vector and we factored out as a <coughs> we factored out this x3 as a scalar multiple. Okay? So once we redistribute it, like this guy, this guy, this guy, and then we will obtain the same result. Okay. Right. Um, and then what's the meaning of this way of representation of our solution? Okay. So in this case, yeah, uh, let's look at this case. So even before looking at or even before we obtain the reduced echelon form, we know that this guy has three variables, right? Because we only have two rows and we have three variables and so we have only two pivots at most, right? So it means we have at least one free variable. And then yeah, let's just uh, consider the sim sim yeah, simple example where we just replace this b as zero and then we don't need to worry about uh, whether we have solution or not, right? Because uh, we will we will be guaranteed to have a solution, right? Right? And then <coughs> in this case, those vectors, okay, those vectors are living in the two-dimensional space, right? And then now let's consider this a solution vector x1, x2, and x3. Yeah, simply. Because this uh, solution has three variables, so they are living in three dimensional space. Yeah, that is obvious, right? And then now, what will be our entire solution set? If this equation, if this equation, yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, we might as well use this equation, but uh, in this case, yeah. Our solution is living in the three-dimensional space and the three-dimensional space in this three-dimensional space our entire solution is represented in this form and then uh, this vector v is yeah v is uh, determined as a specific direction of 1 comma 0 comma 4 over 3 right and then what about x3 x3 is our free variable right and so plugging x3 as 1 or 0, negative 1, and uh, 2, and so on, all of them will be our solution, right? Okay, and then how can we represent our solution vector x by using some mathematical notion that we studied? Yeah, it can be represented in this span of this 3 over 4, 0 and 1. Right? Okay, so so far so good. Any questions so far?
So uh, our solution, which lives in which lives in uh, three dimensional space, so that is uh, represented as just a single line that is spanned by our vector p, which is uh, right. And then uh, let's imagine where we uh, the situation where we have. Uh, yeah. Okay, so it doesn't have another example, but I'd like to show another example. Uh, yeah, not this one. So let me show. Let me show another example of we have more uh, two or more than I mean two or more than two uh, free variable. So So let's imagine some reduced echelon form. So it should be zero, and it should be zero, and Right, so this is our uh, echelon form. Uh, sorry, reduced echelon form. Right, and then uh, suppose this com comes from the homogeneous linear system. Okay, and then uh, we obtained this reduced echelon form, and then now <coughs> let me just write it in the parametric equation, and. X X two and X four are free variable, right? Because the second and the third one doesn't have a pivot, right? And then X two and three is negative four X four and X five is equal to zero, right? <coughs> Or, yeah, let me just make it more interesting so that right, so in this case, A is up to five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we have six variables in total, and three of them are basic, and the other three are. Free, right? And then x5 is, uh, yeah, so 5x5 uh, and uh, so 6 and 6 times x6 and negative 7 times x6. Okay, so I'm gonna just show you how to obtain the parametric vector form. So from here x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, right? Okay, so in this case, we always obtain the, we all, all obtain those constant values that is factored out with x2 and x4, okay? So similar to the previous example over here, so we obtained the representation in terms of the free variable and then factored out our free variable out of this vector and then we obtained the constant vector, right? And then uh, <clears throat> in this case, what will be the constant vector corresponding to x2? So x1 is equal to negative 2 times x2, right? What about 
x2 x2 is x2 so what will be the value over here is 1 right it is 1 which is similar to this guy right so we set our free variable as just uh, we represent it as just a free variable x3 and so yeah it will be factored out is uh, as 1 times x3 okay okay so x2 is 1 but what about x3 so x3 is 0 because it doesn't have any x2 component x4 is also 0 x5 is 0 x6 is also 0 right and then what about x4 component x4 times negative 3 and uh, x2 is independent free variable from another free variable, free variable x4 so we can just pretty set as 0 right and what about x3 it is now having negative 4 and then x4 is 1 right and x5 is 0 right x6 is 0 right and then similarly we can obtain x6 times some vector because yeah we have x6 as another free variable right and then uh, we bring this uh, negative 5 and then in the case in the place of free variable we will just simply set 0 and what about x3 it is negative 6 and uh, x4 is 0 and x5 is negative 6 uh, negative 7 and 1 right so you can see the patterns or how how can we factor this uh, uh, parametric equation form into parametric vector form, right so you will see uh, some other uh, yeah yeah some more examples that you will do your own exercise on uh, for this kind of problem and uh, yeah that's it for today and uh, let's continue uh, yeah, this Wednesday Yeah, 모든 더하기 합이요? 네. 어떤 상수를 다 좌우를 겸하는 거, 5, 5, 6, 7 이렇게 다 만드는 건가요? 그렇죠. 맞아요. 요두개 벡터에다가 여기다가 이제 우리가 상수배를 적당히 해서 그게 이제 리니어 컴비네이션 선형 결합의 가중치가 되니까 그 가중치를 어떤 가중치를 써서든 자유롭게 만들 만들었을 때그 결과 벡터들을 다한대 모았더니 그거를 이제 우리가 스팬이라고 부르고요. 이렇게 이 형태가 되는 건가요? 그러면? 네네. 그러니까 이제 u가 이렇게 있고 v가 이렇게 있잖아요. 그 사다리 그 평행사변형의 모든 안쪽에 맞아요. 있는 게 스팬인가요? 아, 그 이게 이제 요 점은 이제 얘 얘다가 곱하기 1, 얘다 곱하기 1을 했을 때요 점이 얻어지죠. 네. 그럼 만약에 얘를 두배 하고 얘는 그냥 한배 했다고 치면 네. 여기가 이렇게 두 배로 가고 사다리 꼴 이렇게 만들어 얘를 두배한 거. 네. 그럼 그 점이 또 이제 결과 포인트가 되죠. e u 플러스 v. 그럼 스팬은 모든 무한한 개념이에요. 네. 거. 근데 저두 개로 리니어 컴비네이션을 해봐야 3차원에서 리니어 컴비네이션 해봐야 저 평면 이상으로는 갈 수는 없어요. 왜냐하면 거기서 만들 수 있는 그 평행사변형의 그 이제 모양은 무한계인 것 같지만 결국은 이 방향은 우리가 유지한 채이 이 각각의 벡터의 방향에 방향은 유지하되 이 길이만 내가 이제 바꾸거나 아니면 마이너스라면 그 길이를 거꾸로 해, 거꾸로 방향으로 해서 하거나 이 정도일 뿐이지 우리가 이제 애초에 없었던 방향을 만들어서 그쪽으로의 점은 우리가 저기 포함을 시킬 수 없는 거예요. 그게 이제 스팬의 개념이에요. 어떻게 응용하는 건가요? 이렇게? 그게 이제 아까 얘기했던 것처럼 이제 기본적으로는 3차원에서 이제 벡터가 두 개밖에 없어요. 그러면 3차원 공간에 있는 모든 점을 두개 어떤 방향으로도 얘네들을 다 모든 애들을 다 표현할 수 없잖아요. 네. 그러니까 이 경우는 이제 해가 아까 얘기했던 것처럼 어떤 B라는 점이 그 스팬 안에 쏙 들어와 있으면은 이제 어떤 해가, 있는, 네, 해가 있는 건데 그 바깥에는 해가 없는 거잖아요. 뭐 그런 식으로 응용이 되는 거죠. 네. 그리고 이제 애초에 이게 스팬 자체가 전체 이 공간을 다 뒤덮었다. 그러면 이거는 B가 어떤 B든 상관없이 이제 해가 있는 거고. 그러면은 스팬을 해놓고 네. 그 벡터식에서 벡터 행 1, 1 벡터 0, 10 벡터에서 그 그거에서 방정식해서 풀어서 근이 나오면은 그러면 b가 그 안에 있다. 그렇죠. 네. 그렇게 되는 거죠. 네. 
그런 이제 공간상에서의 이 방정식이나 이런 개념들 우리가 이해를 해야 되는 거거든요. 네. 열심. 네. 어, 그래서 A에서 모든 로우가 피벗을 네. 가지고 있으면 은 네. 최소 하나의 해는 가지고 있다고 얘기하셨죠. 네. 근데 만약에 네. 로우가 다 0인 로우가 응. A, A에 존재하면 은다 0인 로우가 A에 존재하면요? 해가 존재, 존재할 수도 있고 안할 수도 있, 있는 네. 거잖아요. 네. 네. 근데 그러면 every A에 있는 모든 로우가 피벗을 가진다는 진술은 어, 네. 해를 어, 하나 이상 가진다는 거를 그렇죠. 얘기할 뿐어그 어, 반대가 되면은 그러니까 꼭꼭 꼭 A의 모든 로우가 피벗을 가지지 않고 있어도 해가 있는 경우가 발생할 수 있는 그렇죠. 네. 보장만 할뿐 이게 그렇죠, 확실하다는 네. 얘기예요. 그러니까 운 좋은 비를 만나면 해가 있고 네. 아좀 운이 안 좋게 비를 좀 잘못 비를 만나면 잘못이라는 거는 이제 A 파트에서 이제 all zero in your row가 발생이 되는 거는 네. 이제 마지막에 마지막 엔트리가 피벗이 될 가능성을 우리는 열어 준 거예요. 네. 그러면은 이제 그 B 벡터가 이제 뭐 A 로프를 만들면서 마지막에 얘가 피벗으로서 이렇게 뭔가 이렇게 될수 있다면 그거는 그때 해가 없는 거잖아요. 한번 더 확인을 해 봐요. 그렇죠. 맞아요. 그렇죠. 네. 이 부분은 잘 이해 못 하겠는데. 네. 네. If and only if가 if가 아닌가요? 네, 맞아요. 그러면은 이게 지금 그 네. 이게 하나 이상 그 변수, 자유 변수 하나 이상 있다는 이해가 잘안 되는데. 음. 그러니까 여기서 지금 <웃음> 이거에서 우리는 이 호모니니스 리니어 시스템이 x 이꼴 0이라는 0을 넣으면 무조건 0을 만들 수 있으니까 이게 세가 하나가 있다는 걸 아는데 네. 그거 우리가 트리비얼 솔루션이라고 부르고 난 네. 트리비얼 솔루션은 거꾸로 아, 그 x 중에 어느 하나라도 이제 0이 아닌 즉 이제 이 트리비얼 솔루션이 모두 0인 음. 솔루션과 다른 어떤 솔루션을 아. 의미를 하는데 다른 거를 가진다는 건 뭐냐면 우리가 이제 그 선형 그 방정식에서 해가 있을 때는 무조건 하나가 있거나 아니면 뭐 무조건 네. 무수히 많이 있거나 잖아요 네, 네. 그러니까 하나가 더 있다는 거는 이거는 무수히 많다라는 걸 의미를 하고요 아, 그럼 해가 무수히 많을 때는 과연 어떤 조건이었느냐는 이제 우리가 이전에 배웠던 이제 프리 베리어블이 있었느냐라는 조건과 이제 동일해진다는 거죠 아, 그 뜻이군요 네. 그리고 그 여기서 네. 그, 아 잠깐만요 아 네, 이거는 제가 직접 공부하고 네 그럼 네아예 여보세요 